Let's learn how to use the plot pole zero sub vi to plot the pole zero diagram of a digital filter. I've previously downloaded this to my lab view folder. I'm going to open plot pole zero dot vi. This is a polymorphic sub vi, so you can select one of two different forms, one that's intended for cascade style coefficients and the other for direct style coefficients. You might notice that the VI is actually composed of three VIs. Here you recognize the cascade and direct. You can open those directly, but if you want to be able to use either one, then simply open the one called plot pole zero VI. To illustrate the operation of this VI, I'm going to make use of the Chebyshev coefficients generator. This uses the IIR filter cluster, and that's a reference to the cascade style. I can do a direct connection to the pole zero plotter. Then I'm going to do a right click and create an indicator. Over here on the indicator, we see that we have the zeros in white and the poles in red. And we see two poles. And we see what appears to be only one zero, but it's actually two repeated zeros. Let me increase the order of the Chebyshev filter a bit. Let's change that to five. Now I see five poles. And again, we would actually have five repeated zeros located right here. Now to illustrate the other version that is the one based on the direct form coefficients, I'll make use of the cascade to direct coefficients calculator. I'm going to do a copy and then change that to the direct form. Forward coefficients need to be connected to the B input and the reverse, connect, reverse coefficients connect here. Let me create another indicator as well. Incidentally, the plot engine takes up a fair amount of space. You can right click choose visible items, and then disable the plot legend. I'm also going to rename this to Cascade, and the second one to Direct, so we can keep track of those as being distinct plots. Now, in principle, these should always give us the exact same pole zero plot and right now they do look pretty similar. Poles and zeros look like they're all happening in about the same place. Let me try raising the order. As we start to get into higher order filters, you start to notice a difference in the direct form version here. Let's try pushing that up to 11 and even up to 15. Now the way the zeros are basically flaring out here is an indicator that something is not going well. The cascade form gives us better numerical stability than direct form. That's the reason why we have the two different versions for plotting. Finally, I'd like to show you how you can uh, basically play around with the coefficients directly. I'm creating a set of default coefficients as a starting point. You notice that the B coefficients begin as an empty array. The A coefficients begin with the lead coefficient, that is the A0 coefficient set to 1, and all the remaining coefficients uh, empty. To illustrate what I mean here, you can simply type in coefficients directly and just see what happens. Let me work on the B coefficients. This amounts to what's called a two-point averager, and it has a zero out here at pi radians per sample. This would be a three-point averager. It adds a zero. There's a four-point version, and then a five-point averager. That's just an example of how you can directly enter coefficients and then investigate the resulting pole zero plot. All right, I hope you have a clear idea of how you can now create your own pole zero plots.